Next, our panelists will discuss on corporate bill on Thailand new gateway. Our panel consists of the following members. Dr. Aripong Pushaum, Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Energy and Chairman of Thai Airways International. Today, Dr. Aripong will represent Thai Airways to give his view on the government initiative to make Thailand an aviation hub as well as Eastern Economic Corridor in particular. Secondly, Mr. Tevin Wongwanit, President and CEO of PTT Public Company Limited. Mr. Tevin has over 30 years of experience in the energy sector as a top executive in the PTT group. And lastly, Dr. Nitinai Siri Samatakan, President of Airports of Thailand. Dr. Nitinai was appointed to this role in 2015. Prior to that, he was the Deputy Director General of the Fiscal Policy Research Institute. While our speakers are getting ready, may I take this opportunity to recap with you again the rest of today's agenda. We come to the second slot of the afternoon session, ladies and gentlemen. The session titled Corporate View on Thailand New Gateway. This is then followed by Thailand's strategic move of private sector by Mr. Chasiri Soponpanit, President of Bangkok Bank, Mr. Thapana Siri Watanapakti, President and CEO of Thai Beverage Public Company Limited. Mr. Supachai Jiarawanon, CEO of Jiren Pokapan Group. And afterwards, it will be Thailand Startup Opportunities and Challenges by Mr. Thanapong Naranong, Managing Director of Beacon Venture Capital Limited. Mr. Paul C. Watakun, Group CEO of A Commerce. Mr. Yod Chin Supakun, CEO and co founder of Wong Nai. May I now invite all panelists and our moderator on stage to begin the panel discussion. This session will be moderated by Mr. Sunil Jaktiani, the Bureau Chief for Bloomberg News in Thailand, which is our official media partner today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome them with a warm round of applause. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, I'm uh, very honored to be uh, with such a distinguished panel. Um, we have here today the heads of three companies with a combined market capitalization of more than $50 billion. Um, in PTT and AOT, we have the two biggest companies in the Thai market. And with Thai Airways, we have uh, the national flag carrier. Um, we're hoping to look in more detail at how the EEC will be helping um, companies, these companies individually. Um, as it's rolled out over the course of the next few years. Um, so perhaps we could begin, uh, first of all, uh, just drilling down into how you see the project benefiting your companies and what concrete steps uh, you're taking to make the most of the project to come. Perhaps we can start with Airports of Thailand. Um, what, what concrete steps uh, are you taking for the EEC and, and how do you see it benefiting, benefiting AOT? All right, um, for the AOT, it might be different from big two company who has a huge investment in infrastructure at the EEC. For the AOT, we uh, help improving connectivity between two of our big airport, Suanapum Airport and Donburg Airport with Utapau Airport. AOT uh, operates six airports nationwide, take into account about 85% of total passenger by improving um, the airport, we have two different concepts. The first one, improve the airport as the gateway. The second improvement concept is to improve the airport as hub. By having improving the airport as a gateway, we, used, we need to use the local resource, such as a basic infrastructure, such as a natural resource all around the airport. And EEC is very benefit uh, it's, it's very strong for this concept because uh, they will build the, the, new, the new city, the new investment industry around there. So I think uh, by having the industry development around the ECC or around the Utapau Airport, is a big magnet enough 
to have Utapau as a gateway to that province, to that area. But uh, it's not quite enough to have Utapau to step into the big jump if Utapau not improve the airport as the hub. By having the hub, we need a connectivity between flight, flight to flight, especially for international flight. Uh, according to our uh, empirical data, we found that um, uh, the schedule international flight more than 25 flight per schedule, winter schedule or summer schedule, more than 25 uh, schedule international flight per schedule. The airport view has the transit transfer passenger, and that is the first stage to become hub, to become the hub. So by having the EEC development, we need connection, probably the high-speed train between Sunapur Airport, Don Mueang Airport, and Utapau Airport. This is the key success to improve, the, to, to improve Utapau Airport in the way to be the hub. So the, the, the overall plan is a $5.7 billion investment, both to expand the um, MRO side of, of, the, uh, of the opportunity in, in Utapau, but also uh, for it to be handling more passengers. So does that mean that you need to see these other infrastructure steps first before the airport can be fully developed um, per, the, per the plan? Well, I, I think Utapau Airport has a... Uh has a lot of advantage, has the big endowment by introducing the big project into that area. You know, the MRO is also one of the magnet to bring the flight. But by, by, by not cooperating between uh, government sector to government sector, improving MRO alone, but has no connectivity between all the airport might not be, you know, the, the, the power might not be strong enough you know, to jump up the Utapau Airport into the, into the hub position. So it needs to be a kind of symbiotic project where yes. things happen sure. together for it to have full fruition? Sure. Okay. Um, we talked about MRO. Um, perhaps, um, Kunarapong, you could talk about uh, the opportunities you see for uh, Thai Airways and, and the MRO potential as well. Yes. <clears throat> we are... Good, good afternoon. We are quite, <laughs> we're quite excited with the EEC that with, that's coming because... It's part of the, it, it's in line with part of the Thai strategy to diversify our revenue from just airline flying everywhere. And then you see there's a lot of um, um, situations that the flight has to, uh, the, the tourism have to change all the time. So diversifying to MRO means uh, maintenance, repair, and overhaul business of airline is something is um, thing that we want to pursue. Um, you have seen that um, since you are fund managers, you have seen that our stock price last year, beginning in, in January, it was eight baht per share. And it went along the year, it went up to 33, and now it's about 22. Um, from that, that simply means that the investors, the fund managers, have seen our strategy of roadmap towards recovery of, our, of Thai International and make it stronger. We have improved our revenue and profit turnaround. And we, from, from 22 billion loss to a plus of 7 billion. That is a turnaround in two years. And according to the strategic plan, we want to diversify our revenue into businesses of MRO. Since we, everybody is saying that the industry of airline, there are so many planes coming up new planes coming in, in the world. And 41% of those 20 years, um, 20 years order, 41% of those aircraft will come to Asia Pacific. That's a lot. That means that's a lot of competition in flying business. But at the same time, Thai see this opportunity for Thai International Airlines. You see, you have so many planes up there, the maintenance, repair, the overhaul will be a stable business for us. So our strategy is simply to increase this revenue and the survival and make Thailand in the future much stronger. Um, EC is something that came in an opportune time because this year we plan to try to conclude 
uh, the business model of how we're going to move on MRO. And we try to execute and make a joint venture by next year. So this is the timing that the EEC, the logistics center, we are logistic hub already. These things can add together and EEC with us will, will make um, the investment uh, more feasible. Maybe we can come back a bit later to the specifics of the um, progress that you've made so far with Airbus. Um, couldn't Evan, perhaps you could talk about uh, PTT and uh, the same question to you, uh, the opportunity for PTT and the concrete steps you're taking in the EEC? Uh, yes, thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, about 30 years ago, Thailand has uh, this initiative called Eastern Seaboard Project, uh, covering Chonburi and Rayong province, and start to stimulate the industry, the investment, the manufacturing base for the country, uh, based on the energy hub, because we have natural gas from Gulf of Thailand landing over there, uh, and then refinery over there, and then uh, start to develop other industry. So over the past 30 years, Thailand has, uh, has enjoyed a sort of a S-curve on economic growth, uh, double digit in many years because of this Eastern Seaboard. And lately, in the past 10, 15 years or so, our economic growth started to, to slow down a little bit. Still growing, but not as fast. Uh, so we're seeing this uh, uh, EEC is probably can be viewed as the uh, uh, Eastern Seaboard episode two, to, uh, to drive the new S curve for the economic growth based on the existing industry in the Eastern Seaboard area, which comprises of maybe about 4,000 factories, 30 uh, industrial estates. Many of those are in the supply chain uh, with the business in the PTT group. Uh, we are in the energy business, uh, oil and gas, going into petrochemical as well as uh, other energy area like uh, electricity or, or other areas. And uh, likewise, uh, the business of PTT Group has grown quite a bit during that expansion of the Eastern Seaboard project uh, through the expansion of refinery of petrochemical in many phases, uh, expansion of uh, energy demand, uh, more natural gas coming in, and now we start to import uh, n uh, natural gas liquid, or, or sorry, liquid liquefied natural gas, LNG, from overseas into the eastern seaboard area. Uh, but again, our growth has been uh, slowed down because I think it's saturated when you, when your industry, you reach a certain level, uh, the uh, you know, life cycle uh, curve. So EEC, uh, one, one thing is would not only allow us to expand uh, based on organic growth, growing along the value chain of what we are doing already. It also provides the opportunity to grow into the new business, new area, uh, which sometimes link to our existing business. Uh, our company in the group, whether it's refinery, petrochemical, exploration production, has their own plan in expanding their business. And the majority of the investment would be in the uh, EEC provinces. Uh, so having this uh, support by the government uh, in line with what we are doing and would allow us to uh, capitalize on the different measures that the government put out to attract the investment, uh, that we can do it faster, we can do it uh, more efficiently and also uh, in the least cost uh, way. So actually it, it helped us to, to be more competitive in terms of uh, the global competitiveness with the other uh, producer or manufacturers. Uh, I think on top of that, we, uh, we have uh, put on the strategy for, for creating the new S-curve for the PTT group. And we have set up uh, the research university, research institution in the uh, uh, Wangchan uh, Valley in Rayong province, which is in the EEC, uh, to, to look for the new uh, business for the group, uh, not just uh, oil and gas, not just petrochemical, many other things. Can you give us an example of those kinds of industries? Wh which new businesses mm. do you think are going to emerge from that, from that initiative? Yes, uh, one of the areas we're looking at is the uh, robotic, uh, taking 
this all this disruptive technology on the digitization, uh, Internet of Things, uh, in artificial intelligence to put together and uh, uh, develop the, the robotics industry to uh, enable the industry to be more efficient as well as to develop the new business opportunity uh, in the robotic itself. The other area would be along the line with the government direction of promoting the bio economies uh, because our uh, chemicals industry has been on petroleum based. But in the future, we would look for the opportunity to uh, continue to add value to the bio, to the agricultural products, into the biochemicals, biopharmaceuticals, or bio. Uh, fuel area. So those are the, another area where the PTT group is is looking at. And I think that the third part, which is a bit more sexy than the other two, which is the electrification. The uh, by electrification, actually, it's part of a threat to the fossil fuel oil and gas, because we all uh, hear about the EVs, electric cars, and uh, fuel cells, and other things. So those are the things that we are also exploring the opportunity and, and in the EEC area there's potential uh, to do the research, to do the uh, uh, development on the, the electrification, whether it's the factory for energy storage batteries or whether it's the, uh, uh, we already have a very strong uh, automobile in the, in, in the EEC area. So to, to expand on that into the EVs would not be that difficult. So those are the things that might be uh, building the new new production base for Thailand as well as for our group. Um, could you hazard a guess as to how much you think uh, PTT will be investing over the next few years in the in the EEC area? Well, the the figures for the existing business is a bit more reliable because we know what we're going to do. So uh, that would be uh, one of the uh, investment that uh, is done by by our uh, Thai oil, PTT Global Chemicals, IRPC, or even PTT itself is expanding our uh, receiving terminals for LNG uh, and expanding our gas pipeline network to cover the area uh, out, outside out of the EC as well. But all of this, uh, our five years figure of the combined group uh, would be, I think, over one trillion uh, but so you have to convert that back to dollars a little bit, <laughs> 30 billion maybe, yeah, about 30 billion US for investment in all of these projects, and this is for just the uh, the one we can really identify at the moment. So the new one, like in the electrification area, we have not put in the figure yet. It depends on the the feasibility and the opportunity. Um, now, the EEC has a number of um, tax breaks and other advantages that comes with it. Um, I was wondering if that's a factor which uh, affects your decision making about uh, what you do with your operations. So, for example, um, Kun Nitinai, when you look at the, the tax breaks and the other incentives in the EEC, is there an incentive to set up an operation there or to relocate certain operations there? Well, um, I think that's one of the um, key issues that um, induced the uh, business into the EEC area. And, uh, but um, as the big, the big investment come into that area, all the infrastructure must be support. Is that the, the, other, the other key important issue for the success factor about improving the infrastructure. And I believe that uh, the Thailand has located in a good strategic location, not only the tax incentive or, or, or other government policy else, but the location that we located itself right now in the middle of East and West Corridor, starting from Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. I think this is one of the key success to have the EEC that's also located in the middle of Thailand Whereas the Thailand located in the middle of CLMV again, so by not only the or the policy that government spearhead to that direction to the AEC, but the, the our endowment is really you know is really at, has a more advantage than all other area. Yes. Um, couldn't. Sorry. 
Okay. Um, in this is the charge that um, Thai will be um, doing joint venture and negotiating with uh, Airbus right now, the business model. The dark blue ones are the heavy maintenance, line maintenance training center for building new, new staff and so on, painting shop, logistic, and composite. This will be the latest hangar in the world. Yeah, usually, they, usually they, when you, want, you put a plane into the shop, and it takes two days just for inspection. But with a smart, like this one, they can do it in one hour. So the productivity of the turning of the plane will be much bigger and much faster. And with, you see that uh, this is the main thing that we try to conclude the business and within this year and then try to do, grow through the process and then get joint venture by early next year. But at the same time, we have a team going out to um, join us and participate in other area which is in the outer circle, engine, landing gear, all these things, we are the, there. All these companies, we are also soliciting it right now and we are willing to do joint venture with that. This is an opportunity time for all of us to really look into this area because the EEC tax scheme give much more than BOI. It give up to 15 years of tax break and corporate tax break. Five year maximum for the, all the expert person for the 15% um, tax uh, on personal income tax and all these things, five-year visa for working permit visa, which is a lot of things that accommodate um, people to come and work um, in this area. Um, so this is the first start, but the blue one are to be the nucleus of the investment. And with this one, we can expand. We are looking at, um, we are looking to expand and expand over. And if we can invite them, huh? every company is in this area, the engine and all those things to come in. This will be the aviation and MO hub in the ASEAN and Asia region. So, uh, so exactly what stage are you at in your discussions with um, Airbus? We, we saw that you signed the MOU um, earlier on this year. Uh, do you, are you gonna work towards a formal joint venture where both parties invest to develop this? And if so, when do you think that, that would happen? Right now, we are looking. We are we are talking about the um, that blue one. What is the scope and how much we're going to do and the um, the area. How we how we going to scope our business. And then, um, according to the law in Thailand, we have to go through PPP. This is a joint venture thing. Um, but we know that EC came out with a special law. Also, we will come with a special law to fast track all this negotiation to be much faster. So that's why we are. Very, we try to say, we try to finish this um, negotiation and joint venture agreement by early next year. It's simply along with this fast track PVP that EEC is going to come out. So, so once you conclude the discussions early next year, then you can actually go on to implement, implement the plans. Once you, once you conclude the discussions, you can go on to implement next year. Uh, next year, early next year, that's why, what we plan and to. How much do you think, what, what kind of size of investment do you think it's gonna take? Um, it'll be, it'll, right now we're looking at, um, 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 the number is still looking at it, depending on the scope. It could be up to a billion dollars and so on, right? But um, if the first phase we, we can conclude by early next year, it'll be finished in four or five years and the commencement of the work after that. So that, and, would, be, that would be a billion dollars of joint investment from yeah. all the parties? It'll be joint, but at least right now it's between two of us. Uh, it'll be some more. But also, we are lo really looking at the outer one, eh? the business of engine. Now, this component mm -hmm. is something we want to, because this is an area that is connected by sea, land, and rail. And, us, and Thailand is in the middle of ASEAN mainland. And all the countries around us, Cambodia, Myanmar, and so on, and Vietnam, they are growing very fast. That is the stage that they are growing right now. So the connectivity that we try to build on is simply so important to make the movement really. We have a, tra we have a tax, no tax between ASEAN countries already. So the shipment is here, it's simply a gateway to go to other countries around that too. Um, so right now, I understand that Singapore <clears throat> dominates the MRO um, industry in Southeast Asia. Um, why do you think that Thailand has 
the potential to eat into that market share. Um, what are the advantages, aside from the EEC's tax breaks, what are the advantages for Thailand? First thing, the area itself, in terms of land, land area prepared for future phases, we have enough land to keep on expanding, expanding, expanding. That is no problem in this area, right? The second thing is, this, we are the, the total number of passengers that go through Thailand is 100 million. That is the biggest in ASEAN. Um, and we have a growth of average, we're predicting about average of 10% growth. So this is continuing, have been continuing. This is cumulative average growth in the past. So this we think is, um, um, is going to continue because the order of the plane that have, that have been ordered for the next 20 years, 41% will come to this area. So this is something that indication of the economics, uh, economics is booming in this area that, that you know, a lot of things and infrastructure and all the investment will come here. Um, so one of the objectives of the EEC is to uh, develop, to, to modernize industry and develop uh, more modern industries, um, zero emission cars, robotics, smart electronics. Um, there's an array of objectives there. Um, and one issue that's often raised is the extent to which Thailand has the right skills in its workforce to make those industries a success. Um, perhaps we could talk about that. Um, Kun Tevin, what does Thailand need to do? Does it have the right skills now? And if not, what does it need to do to get the skills to make 4.0 and the EEC a success from that perspective? Uh, I think we can talk about two areas. One is the uh, skill personnel. The other one is the uh, sort of a source for innovation and research. And those, uh, we believe that it will truly drive the, uh, the competitiveness uh, of the EEC area in the future. Uh, but on the skill side, uh, in the EEC area, there are uh, quite a few uh, uh, technology college and also university. And uh, with the, uh, I didn't get to talk about the, the incentive, but also the tax break, the incentive for having expats living in Thailand uh, with a very good package on, on tax system would also attract a lot of uh, skilled workforce coming into the country. I think that, that would be one area just to ensure. Of course, we will have to continue to focus on developing the, the local uh, workforce so that they'll have uh, sufficient skills. But in, uh, as a backup, I think the government has provided the, the, the attractive package for an OC workers to come in and work in the area, uh, uh, having actually paying lower personal income tax than, than the Thais working. Uh, but that on the skill side. But I think more importantly is on the, because we're talking about the new industry, and the new industry will require some, some new capability, new know, knowledge, as well as the uh, innovation and also the support in terms of technology and research. And in the uh, EEC area, uh, we are, uh, working with the government to put together an ecosystem in the Wang Chan Valley, where we already have our research institutes uh, to be sort of an innovation center for, for several areas, like the robotics, like the bio-based uh, industry. Uh, with the, with the WISTEC, which is the uh, Vityasuri Meti Institute of Technology as the core academic research center, but we also invite a lot of uh, research universities, uh, both in Thailand and also coming from overseas to come in and take a look and maybe set up the facility there. Uh, the industry that will be utilizing this technology is actually already in the area, in the Eastern uh, Economic Corridor area already. So it will be convenient for them to come in and, and set up a facility uh, of their researcher there to, to have this uh, you know, day-to-day -day dialogue with the, with the researchers uh, from the academic sector. Uh, hopefully, uh, we would also try to, to simulate some things like the Silicon Valley uh, of, the, of uh, the U.S. at Wang Chan Valley for the new industry. Uh, and you asked what Thailand needs to do. I think there are responsibility of three different sectors, at least the academic part, the education part, uh, we probably need to, uh, to look into the expansion of the curriculum 
to uh, provide our students, our researcher with the capability in a concept like design thinking, uh, in being able to uh, take the ideas from the ideas into into creativity, into the innovation, and then actually into the uh, the commercial products or services. So those are the things that uh, so far we have have not been uh, very very uh, successful in that area. We still have a lot of research uh, work on the shelf. So I think that's one thing that we need to focus on the, uh, the education side with support maybe from the business side. Uh, the research institute will have to focus a little bit because if the university, the research institutes try to do everything within their own uh, uh, university, then they're not going to be good at anything. So I think they, we probably have to, to discuss among ourselves on which uh, university, which institutes, it's good in, in which area, and then f focus and dig deep on that in order to come up with real uh, innovation uh, in that area. Uh, the second part on the business side, the business side need to uh, allocate certain funds for research and development and utilizing these uh, several research uh, institutes uh, for their own benefit as well. Uh, they need to allow their people, their employees, their researcher to test new ideas and to fail. Because if you don't fail, you never learn. So if uh, the, the corporates, the business, uh, adopt the, the old concept that whatever you do, you have to be successful, you have to create return on investment, then uh, very difficult to, to go into the new space of the business. Uh, the third part, which is the most important, is the government. Uh, they need to nurture the ecosystem that would allow the innovation to happen. And I think we have seen several measures like the, uh, the regulations that will attract uh, uh, skilled people, professionals to come in and work. They have uh, indicated uh, higher research and development funds from the government, the budget. They have allowed the, uh, the tax benefit, higher tax benefit for the research uh, expense by the, by the industry. Uh, they have focused on putting out the protection for the intellectual property in Thailand. And those are the, the ecosystem that would allow or encourage the, uh, the innovation uh, industry, uh, society in, in this area. And hopefully, Wang Chan would be one example that, that would make it happen. I guess, um, can I um, take my head, the chairman of Thai, out for a minute and then wear another hat as a permanent secretary of energy? Huh? So it's, we are working with the PTT. Um, in, terms of, um, in terms of policy, um, the electrical vehicles are the things that the government support. And we have laid down the plan in the future. PTT itself can turn the infrastructure of PTT station into electrical station to charge a car in a minute. Okay, we are supporting all these things in research and everything. So EEC is something that we want to see further investment into this area that it's in the time that we are supporting in terms of policy already. Also, the other area that will be in this area could be is the bio industry, which PTT is the focus, um, focuses on this very much. So some cups, you can, it will be degradable uh, right now because it's made from, um, from, from something, not from chemistry, but from, from plant, all these things. So in this research area, is something we have money to support also. So industry that will come to Thailand into this area, I think we have the research money to, to, to participate. We have the policy to support. And EEC is another thing that is make it uh, economical and workable, feasible. Uh, with your government hat on, <clears throat> um, how, how big a challenge do you think it is to, to bridge that skills gap? And because uh, while, while there might be policies in place, they will take time to, to implement and to have an effect. And the EEC is a, is a five-year five plan. It's a fairly immediate plan. Um, does that mean that Thailand has to rely to a large extent on importing the talent? Or is there going to be, or are we going to see the fruition of the education policies earlier than that? I mean, how, how big a challenge do you think it is? I 
think um, this couldn't take can talk more, uh, a lot on bio bio industry, but on the energy itself, on these, uh, on the battery, all these things, um, we are looking at. Uh, we have these days we have renewable energy in Thailand so much, and one of the things that um, problem is about the stability of the uh, renewable e energy. So in Electrical Generating Authority of Thailand, which is the person governing the power producer, need this investment to to really to um, realign all the renewable energy. So the investment. That we, we go, the demand for battery will be very big. Today we see few companies already are requesting for BOI in Thailand. So this is something that PDT is going to be involved, ECAT is going to be involved in, uh, in joint measure or in participation of the investment. If I may add on, on the preparation for the skills, uh, the government uh, recently has set up uh, the program, you know, public-private uh, cooperation program we call in Thai Prasharat. And there's, I think, few of the Pacharat group focusing on uh, education, basic education, uh, focusing on Im improving, enhancing the uh, capability of the students in uh, vocation, uh, vocational degree in college, and also looking at the improvement in the uh, new S curve in the research and development. Uh, and they. Uh, they bring the government sectors, the academic sectors, and also the private sector to come in and work together. Uh, those are the, the uh, sort of direction that we are working on, uh, helping working together among the three circles that you see on, on the screen uh, to put together. Uh, couldn't it tonight the same, the same question to you? Um, how big a challenge is the skills deficit? Um, and uh, from your perspective, running AOT, what what can companies do to help to help bridge that gap and to help bridge the skills deficit? For skill, mm -hmm. for skill labor. Yeah. Well, um, for AOT, the, the labor skill is quite niche and quite specific in some area, especially for safety and security. So um, I I think um, AOT as the the company who has the the majority share of the aviation transportation. Yeah, we we try to we try to improve our uh, safety and safety security as well as a service skill as much as possible, and uh, I think as a TG also um, joined with the CATC, the, the training center for the aviation personnel at the um, uh, EEC area. It will help to improve the personnel for the aviation industry quite a lot by having a training center joint between the uh, TG and the, the, our um, one other state-owned enterprise uh, aviation training center. Um, perhaps we can turn now to the to the level of investment that's needed or that's planned for the first five-year phase of the EEC, um, uh, forty-four billion dollars roughly. Um, now, Kuntevan, you were saying earlier that perhaps um, that sum could actually be an underestimate of, of the amount of uh, money that could flow into the region. Uh, maybe you could explain your thinking on that. Well, I think it's natural that when we look into the creating a new area for new business, the estimates for the capital expenditure, initially you would not be able to identify all the possibilities. I think the figure that, that, that you talked about, uh, 44 billion US dollars, will cover mainly the infrastructure required to, to improve the uh, logistic system, uh, the airports, the uh, seaports, uh, the rapid train or the highways, and some of the industry. Uh, maybe a figure would be about something like 14, 15 billion for the investment in the industry. Uh, I still see that as the uh, minimum figures for actually in the industry invest. Depends on whether we can identify the new S-curve soon enough, and then we can go in. Uh, but of course, the initial investment will also be in the research facility, which is not that much. It's just that to, to uh, uh, what do you call, the inspire the people, the business as well as the academic institutions to put in people into the, uh, this area, into this Wangshan Valley, to create the, uh, the ecosystem, that ecosystem. And once we get the the result from the innovation center, 
then it will create uh, more investment into the area. Uh, for our group, uh, we already have planned to, to invest in expansion of the refineries and petrochemical complex. Uh, we already have planned to uh, increase the uh, investment in our energy you know, uh, supply, like the LNG receiving terminals, pipeline uh, network that I talked about, and those are mainly in the EEC area. Uh, but then we have a few other initiatives which we have not put in the level, the amount of investment yet uh, depends. For example, the energy storage, as uh, Dr. Aripong mentioned, it, it will be the key to the electrification. It would help stabilize the uh, power generation uh, system. It will help fuel the, the EVs. So the, the energy storage and the battery uh, investment would be something that is very crucial. And then uh, uh, not only PTT group, but also in other companies are looking at that. Uh, uh, power generation to supply to the new airport in Utapau would also be something, in that area would also be something that would require additional investment. Uh, Bio-based industry, looking into uh, the bio, we already have certain biofuel in Thailand. Uh, quite, as a matter of fact, I think we use biofuel among the top in the, in the region. Uh, but to, to extend that into biochemicals, bioplastic, biopharmaceutical is something that uh, we need more research work to support that because at the moment the, the cost is still uh, pretty high compared to the uh, conventional fuel. Um, the, the, the plans for battery storage is very interesting. It's a very hot sector right now. Um, maybe could you talk a bit more about that? What exactly are you mulling, considering uh, for that particular sector? But there are many Thai corporates that are now investing in the battery. Uh, I believe that there are a few companies that have solid plan to set up a, a battery plant uh, for EVs, in coupling with the manufacturing of, of EVs, uh, you know, EV cars. Uh, for PTT Group, we're looking at the energy storage for power generation, especially for the renewable energy for the uh, uh, solar power plant as probably the, uh, the first priority at this stage. Our, one of our group of company uh, called GPSC uh, has invested in the technology company in the US in Boston called 24M. Uh, they have this uh, process for manufacturing uh, a lithium ion battery in a very, uh, very efficient, uh, cost is lower and also uh, can be manufactured in a very fast uh, time. So we are looking at the possibility of setting up uh, or utilizing this technology for setting up plans. Uh, the customer now in probably in Japan or in the US, uh, we are looking at the, pos at the possibility of setting up the plant in Thailand as well, in the EEC area, but that is still in the feasibility stage. And uh, would you, you mentioned that the customers are in the US or in Japan. Um, would you only have a plant here or could you, could you be manufacturing batteries elsewhere as well using this technology? Uh, there are considerations of setting up plants in, in other places as well. You could do it elsewhere as well. Okay. Um, Kun Arapong, with your government hat on again, um, uh, how are you going to achieve the 44 billion targets? Um, uh, are you, how, wh is the money going to be coming in for that kind of investment? Because um, FDI inflows uh, have been picking up recently, uh, but this would require a different scale of investment, and domestic investment has been subdued recently. So do you think that uh, the 44 billion target can be achieved? Um, um, in, in terms of um, in, in, in the EC area, Utapau Airport is one of the first things already be, uh, um, the cabinet already approved to expand the, the airport. And we are sit simply situated adjacent to it right there. So in this part of the project itself is quite concrete. We committed to um, lease land over there for 500 right for the project phase one, phase two, phase three already. And the runway is going to be there because the, um, right now the two airports is quite congested and this third, the third one is, going, is, is a necessary one. And these days this airport is, uh, is about a lot of um, um, charter flights 
which is individual spot, uh, the, um, point to point. So these are already coming up. This, this area is growing so fast, so the airport will be utilized for definitely. And the, we heard the Prime Minister commitment for heavy investment in infrastructure, continue investment in infrastructure to connect all the ports to all these things. These are things that we know, the government know. To make this area successful, these investments have to be committed and invest. Uh, Tonight, perhaps we can come back to the, the airport. Do you, is there any, um, do you have any indication of how much um, AOT might be looking to invest into the airport project in Utapau? Um, not, obviously, the headline figure is a very big one, uh, over $5 billion, but do you have any concrete plans about what you might be putting into the uh, expansion of the airport? Uh, as Dr. Aripong just mentioned, our two big airports, Suanapum and Don Mueang Airport, is quite congested. Uh, the figure of last year is the beginning era or the beginning period of the AOT for the big investment. We expect to invest about two, about six billion US dollar over a decade, began from last year, and we expect to expand our capacity by the figure of last year, 83.5 billion people a year for the capacity for next. 10 years, we expect the capacity to expand to about 184 or about 100 million uh, passengers a year more than the current situation. For the current figure of the capacity, as I just mentioned, about 80 something million people a year, but we are actually accommodate more than 120 million people already. So it means right now we are under, we are um, serving over capacity by almost 40%. Again, by investing in physical infrastructure on the ground is not enough. We are, right now, we about the aviation transportation also face the congestion on the aerodrome as well. So uh, by having Swanapum and Donburg Airport linked with Utapau Airport, it's not only to uh, dilute the congestion in the Bangkok area is also they lose the congestion on the aerodrome and the air side as well. So right now the government try to consolidate the aviation in investment plan with the airport department. In Thailand we has um, AOT operate six airport has the market share of about 85 percent for the passenger, but we also has about 29 airport belong to the airport department take into account about 15, 12 to 13 percent of the passenger. So right now, we, uh, the, the, the deputy prime minister, Dr. Somkit, ordered us under the, transport, under the transport ministry to consolidate all the plan between the AOT and all other 28, 29 airports to have the same management. So in the near future, not only uh, six billion US dollars going to be invested over a decade period of the AOT. It will be another many billion US dollars to invest for, to the for, to the airport or the airport department as well. And uh, the hub not only centralized in the central area, Suanapum, Don Mueang, and Utapau. We will also has the hub up north in Chiang Mai, down to the south in the Phuket. And probably we will have the aviation hub on the east and west corridor as well. So by, by, by looking at the transportation, national transportation mode, we cannot only focus on the EEC area. We need to, um, we need to consider all the nationwide. And I think the EEC is the, is, uh, is the center of variety of the transportation mode in that area. That I believe that aviation industry will grow quite you know, quite rapid enough, and, and I think we support all other uh, sea mode and train mode around the AAC area as well. You have to talk about the fundings a little bit. Uh, in, in our groups, uh, all of our companies uh, uh, seem to be cash rich at the moment. So we haven't really issued any, any fundraising for a while. The bonds or uh, other things, uh, loan with the banks. And we've been asked by our bondholders, when you're going to issue a new bonds, they would want to invest. So to me, it feels like the liquidity is there. 
they're just waiting for the right in, uh, investment, for the attractive investment. And we believe that our, the investment in EEC would be something that would be quite attractive to the investor. Uh, the, the, the amount that I talked about, uh, the, the 30 billion for the next five years, actually the PTT group can do that uh, without raising additional funds. But if we need to, uh, I, I believe that with the project that has a very uh, strong potential like this, we should be able to, to raise one uh, quite easily. I believe that in the past few years, because of the, uh, well, the energy price has come down and there's a lot of uh, uh, projects that's being delayed or suspended, so there's, there are not a lot of uh, investment worldwide in many areas, in many industries as well, as a consequence to the, uh, the, the, the whole back in the investment in the upstream sector in the exploration production. So there's, there are liquidity that are waiting for good opportunity, and we believe the opportunity to invest in EEC is, is very attractive. It should be the, the answer to that, uh, that challenge. Uh, we've talked a lot about the EEC. Um, maybe I can just ask you a couple of um, more general questions about the situation in Thailand at the moment and the economy. Um, one of the things that we have been reporting on extensively has been the, the rise in the currency uh, in the baht, which is up about uh, just over 5% so far this year. It's one of the best performers in Asia. Um, now, um, are you hearing uh, within industry, is that beginning to uh, have an effect uh, on industry, or do you think it's an increase that, uh, that the corporate sector is able to absorb? Perhaps you could tackle that question. Uh, for us, we manage the uh, currency exchange uh, with, you know, with the risk management concept, and we, we matching our our investment, our fundings, and our revenue uh, proportionally with the currency that, you know, it's the nature of the business, which is majority US dollars. So uh, uh, our investment in US dollars, our revenue is linked to the US dollars. So usually we would uh, try to structure our fundings in US dollars. So for us, uh, you may see as a fluctuation in terms of financial reporting, whether there's any uh, FX gain or loss, in the accounting system, but if you look truly at the, the performance, it would compensate off between the, uh, the revenue affecting from the, the exchange rate and the, uh, the hedging that we're doing, which show into the, uh, the FX gain loss as an impact on the others. I think Dr. Aripong may be qualified to do it. He was a permanent secretary of finance before. <laughs> well, I may talk about Thai International. We have um, revenues in so many currencies, and also our expenses in many currencies also. So what we try to do in Thai International is that we try to do a natural hedge. Simply try to match the expense and the revenue in such a way. And we are doing that, we have been doing that in the past two years. So our, we, our, balance, our balance sheet is always subject to uh, exchange gain or loss in a big, in a big number sometimes, huh? which does not really, really sometimes represent the true performance of that year. Uh, but um, this is something we will try to manage and make it the exchange rate fluctuation and balance sheet is much smaller. Um, this is why, this is how we are doing right now, to do a natural hedge as much as possible, matching the expenses, expenses and revenue in the same currency as much as possible. Uh Nitinai, perhaps you could address the same question. Um, do you see concerns about the strength of the currency this year and how do you handle it for AOT? The financing? The strength of the currency. Yes, um, the AOT has the revenue in bar term as well as the expenditure as well in bar term. So we don't have the, the currency mismatch in, in, our, in our company, except uh, currently we are about to invest, as I just mentioned, about six million. Six billion US dollar. Some of them come from import content, such as the APM and the underground train in the airport. Yeah, some of them um, come from the import content, but uh, it's the risk of the contractor. Mostly, it's the risk of the contractor. Again, as I just mentioned, we don't have the currency mismatch problem because we expenditure and 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 revenue both in in Thai baht. And again, we also. Uh, in expansion of the airport financing also has no problem because we have the specific act 
what we call the Aviation Act, BE 2497, allow us to correct what we call the PSC, Passenger Service Charge, from the passenger. And the, the passenger service charge that we correct cannot expand into or any other proposed else except for expansion of the airport. In the past, as I just mentioned earlier, right now we running over capacity by almost 40 percent. Those amount of over capacity passenger pay the PSC and deposit in our bank account already. Right now, about two billion, about two billion as cash in our bank account. So um, in the near future, we we don't see any uh, problem with the, the liquidity in, in investment in our airport. Okay, thank you. Um, we're coming towards the last few minutes. I wanted to ask a final question. Um, we, uh, we, from our readers, often get questions about uh, next year and the uh, expected transition towards an election. Um, the questions often are about how people should think about what's going to happen next year and uh, what the potential uh, outcomes could be. Um, if, if a foreign investor, a fund manager, came to you and asked you how they should be thinking about the, the potential risks and developments next year. How would you, how would you answer? Perhaps you can go first, Kunarapong. I think the airline industry, the risk is not just in Thailand, it's the whole world. Because wherever we, wherever we fly to, it's, uh, if the, uh, the destination has having problem, the tourism will not go. So, so this is something that we have to manage anyway. And this is something that we have been managing in the past. And in, uh, in terms of investment, this is a strategy that we want to diversify. Because of this, that's why our strategies want to diversify our revenue into area that's MRO, which is uh, that's not subject to the flying of the, um, the, the world event. But if you have so many planes in the air coming next year, the stable business is about maintenance, repair, and overhaul so many planes for us to capture the market. So this is simply the strategy of our strategy to make our revenue sustainable in the future. In terms of so the investment that we have to do in the next one and a half years or so on election, we believe that government will be a smooth transmission, a transition, and we will do the investment according to our plan. So we are confident that we will move forward. Uh, and I, perhaps you could address the same, the yeah. same question. Lucky for the AOT that has um, what we call the backlog. We have the excess demand in the past. Probably in the past we have the political unrest for many years. So the big investment for our company not happened in the past year during the un uh, political unrest period. Right now the demand, was, the, the, the demand has been there. The passenger demand has been there. So right now we just construct to catch up the excess demand. The current government clear up many red tape problem process so that we can get started with our investment that stuck for a decade. As I just mentioned, we had planned to invest about six billion US dollar. About half of them will be invest in Suwannapum Airport. And all the we have eight contracts. And I believe almost all of the aid contract will be tender and get the contractor before the election. So once the construction begin, it just go on. So I'm, I'm, I'm not quite worried about both the demand side, the demand has been there, both the supply side, the construction get begin. So I'm not quite worried about our, our, our plan after the, the, the new election much. Kunt Evan, you get the final word. Uh, just uh, uh, focusing on PTT Group itself, our business is not affected or very little, have very little impact from the political uh, issues uh, because energy demand is there. Growth in, uh, in energy demand and using energy is there regardless of the uh, political uh, situation. Uh, chemicals is there and more importantly we now uh, closely linked to the, the global market rather than just the, the local market. So I think business will continue on in our group as usual. Uh, and if we look a little bit broader, uh, the EEC itself is actually benefiting everyone. Uh, and, and even not just Thailand, 
It also benefited the, our neighboring countries by providing a better logistic system linkage to help uh, transporting the goods and, and products back and forth. So I think it's benefit everyone. It's benefit all the industries, uh, not in any particular person. So to me, uh, if there's any change in the, in the administration, it should not change the direction of driving the EEC forward. Uh, but if broadly into the nation, it's beyond my capability to forecast on how political will impact. But I think we learned a lesson, the Thai learned a lesson, but that if there's so much internal conflict, then everything stall. Everything stop to, to function. And then we, all of us would try to prevent that not to happen. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Very interesting discussion. Thank you very much indeed.